Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams. I'm going to work, um, and this is going to take a while, but I'm going to work this problem nine from chapter eight. So just bear with me, guys, and we'll go from we'll go from there. All right, um, we're making three different types of tents, and so what we know is they initially go to stitching. Um, and then they go to customization, except for the rookie model. This model right here, once it's done in stitching, you'll notice there's nothing here in customization. It goes directly to finished goods. So what we also need to make a note of at this point is that ending whip is 40% complete. All right, so that means that for stitching, 40% of the work has been done, 60% of the work is left to be done, and in customizing, they're 20% complete, which means 20% has been done, 80% is left to be done. And it tells you that conversion costs are allocated based on equivalent units of production. So the first thing that we need to find out is the unit costs or material costs per unit. So what we know is that for unit costs we're going to have part material and part conversion costs. All right, so we're going to start with the rookie model and it's going to follow the same way all the way across. I'm looking to see down here are my material costs. So I'm going to go ahead and use those right down here. All I've done is just move my, simply move the, um, the material costs. But now I've got to determine, because material cost per unit, simply material cost divided by number of units, now I have to figure out what are my material costs per unit. Remember that when we had no beginning whip and since we had no beginning whip what we know is that when these units right here were started all of these units were started a hundred percent of the materials were issued at the beginning so in order to, in order to find material cost per unit I'm simply going to take total materials divided by number of units started and that's where these numbers come from right here. So that was pretty much the straightforward easy part. Now we need to determine conversion costs and we know we're going to have to, to convert to equivalent units because they weren't a hundred percent done. So let's move down and see what those look like. All right, so let's take a look at the um, conversion costs. All right, so we're going to look at conversion costs. We're going to look at stitching first. All right, we know we had zero units in beginning with. We started 1,520 units. Where did we get 1,520 units? This is what we started. We started 600 rookie, 480 novice, 290 hiker, and 150 expert. So I have to account for a total of 1,520 units. Now what I want to know is out of the stitching department, how many did I transfer out or what was completed? And that was 540 in the rookie, 450 novice, 270 hiker, and 120 expert. So now what that gives me is completed and transferred out 1380. So if I started here, I started, I have to excuse my writing, if I started 1520, and I completed in stitching 13, come along, 1380. 
then what I know is that ending whip had 140 units in it, right? Because this was started, transferred out, ending balance in whip. So what I have to do is I have to take that 140 units and I have to convert them to equivalent units of production. And what the problem told us was that they were 40% complete. And remember, I always want to, in ending whip, I want to take into account what did I do. Well, what I did was 40% of the work. So I'm going to take that 140 times 40%. And that's going to give me 56 equivalent units of production as to conversion costs. So we've already calculated what our per unit material cost was. Now I'm going to use these 56 equivalent units that are in my ending work and process inventory to calculate my conversion costs. So this is what it ends up looking like. There were my units that were accounted for. Here is where I converted my 140 in ending whip to 56 equivalent units. And so my conversion cost for equivalent units for the stitching department is 1,436 units. So how do I figure out my per unit conversion costs? The stitching department, I had $50,260 in conversion costs divided by 1,436 equivalent units of production. So I take 50,260, I divide it by 1,436, and I come up with a per unit conversion cost of $35 per unit as to the stitching department. Now I'm simply going to go through, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the customizing department. First thing I have to figure out is how many units did I complete in customizing, right? I finished 440 of the novice, 250 of the hiker, and 100 of the expert. So when I add that all up together, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to figure units completed, right, 790, right? How many units did I have transferred in? Remember, the rookie goes straight to finished goods, so I don't care about those because those are already at finished goods. Instead what I have to do, so now I'm going to look at, remember I'm going to ignore those, so I'm going to look at the difference between what came in and what got finished. And I know that here I had 10 units, here I had 20 units, here I had 20 units. That means I've got 50 units in ending whip. This is what came in and this is what I finished. Remember in the customizing department my whip is 20 percent complete. Remember I always care about what have I done. So let's take a look what that looks like. Alright, remember I said I had started I'd actually started 840 units And then here are my 50 that we didn't finish. Conversion cost as the 20% complete. 50 times 20% is 10. So again, I'm going to use this 800 units to come up with my per unit cost as to um, customizing. How much cost did I have in customizing? $24,000 divided by 
800 units, right? 800, because remember, these didn't come to us. And if I take the difference between what was started and what was finished, I end up with 50 units times 0 0.20. And when I do 24,000 divided by 800, my nifty Walmart calculator tells me that that what I have is $30 per unit. So I had a $30 per unit for $30 per unit for conversion cost plus the conversion cost for stitching plus remember we came up with those direct materials. So what we do is I put it simply into a little chart and this is what it looks like. All right, I've got those unit material costs that we calculated by taking total number of units started divided by total material cost, stitching department for per unit conversion cost, remember this is conversion cost, um, was $35 a unit. Remember the rookie didn't go to customizing so it just carries its $55 straight to finished goods. These other three types of tents had to go to customizing. So we ended up with the novice, the hiker, and the expert all had conversion. Remember that was based on the 800 total units. And so that gives me my unit costs. Right? So hopefully that makes sense. Let me go a little bit further on this problem and see if I can get you straight. All right, ending whip balances. Remember, all I'm going to have is direct materials and conversion costs. So where did I come up with this number of units? You already know where I came up with those per unit direct material costs. But where did I come up with these numbers right here? I'll show you. I went right up here to the and I said units started minus units completed gave me 60. Units started minus completed gave me 30. Units started minus completed gave me 20. Units started minus completed gave me 30. So I should have 60, 30, 20, 30. And through the magic of cost accounting, there are, there are those numbers. 60, 30, 20, and 30. Remember that the problem told us that as to conversion costs, we were 40% complete. So I'm simply going to take the total number of units here, which is 140, times 0 0.40 to come up with my 35, my 56 equivalent units. Remember, we already said for stitching, you already calculated in the earlier problem that conversion cost per units for stitching was $35. So that gives me the ending balance in WIP for that department. Customizing department is going to be done exactly the same way. Um, remember we had our per unit material costs. We knew how many units were left in customizing. How did we know how many units were left in customizing? We went back up here to the customizing department and we said because now remember we're just we're just concerned right here now. Originally, we were up on this line, but we've already dealt with that. So how many units are left? I've got 10 novice, 20 hiker, 20 expert. That's what's my ending work and process. So I should have 10, 20, 20. Shockingly, there they are, 10, 20, and 20. 
You all already calculated unit cost for material, so that's a simple multiplication. And now what we've got to look at is conversion costs, right? Remember the units are 20% complete, and we got 50 units completed out of stitching, so they got $35. Customizing, remember, was only 20% complete as to ending work and process, and there's that same $30 unit conversion cost that you calculated up there in the other problem, so that gives you, for the customizing, that's their ending work and process balance. So when you're dealing with these, with really flows of costs from one department from another, your keys that you have to look at is, do you have anything that doesn't go to both departments? What percentage complete are you as to conversion in each of the two departments? In each of the two departments and then to know that conversion costs are based on equivalent units of production. So hopefully this helped and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day.